But think at like this point, right? That I would be I would be able to like find a checkmate in one, but you know. <laughs> All right, here we go. It's Saturday, and today we got a special little segment here. Uh, Dormant Pasarino has uh, offered to, to teach us a little bit about the Nimzo Indian. Um, so welcome to the stream, Dormant. Oh, thank you, Master Fuzz, and welcome, everyone. Uh, today, I guess we'll be learning a little bit about the same variation of the Nimzo Indian and I hope everyone is doing good and you're in for some quick opening theory. Awesome, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I, the Nimzo Indian is, is an opening that I'm a little bit newer to. I used to play the Semislav. Um, and I transitioned to this maybe about a month and a half ago playing the Nimzo. So I'm definitely looking forward to, to learning some new ideas. Okay, so uh, whenever you're ready, yeah, we can jump into chapter one. All right, let's do it. I'll get to there now. All right. Okay. So uh, we'll well, obviously it's a D4 opening. It's the best move in chess, of course. <laughs> the best move in chess. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'll I'll, I'll, let, I'll let you uh, click the moves out, and we should be we should be synced up here. Yeah, I think we there's an option to sync us up. Uh, where is it? Uh, it you should okay, there should well, be, yeah. Keep keep everyone in the same position. Okay. Okay. So you can see my moves, right? Yep. There we go. D four nine oh six. Uh, yeah, and I'm gonna six. switch the board around so I see it from Black's perspective. Okay. Well, actually, it should be whites because this is what oh, not yeah, to yeah. do as as black. Okay. That's fair. Okay, we're 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 white playing against black. All right, good point. So we have knight f six, c four, e six, knight c three, bishop b four, the Nimzo Indian, and then a three. Immediately asking that bishop a question, to which most ev almost everyone will play bishop takes c three. That's the whole point of the opening. And right. b takes c three. And from here, the move is b6, and so far it's pretty normal. Uh, also, castles is a move. Hmm. See, th this is a move that I don't think I would normally play. But yeah, I guess it's definitely a possible move, right? Just get the king out of the center right away. Yeah, yeah it's a possible move, but uh, I don't know if you can play b6 later and reach a transposition. I actually hmm. haven't checked that. To which white will play s3 i mean it's it's a pretty standard idea in this opening just e, s3 support e4 and go e4 just uh the big yeah. pawn center yeah it's definitely scary to yeah. uh to see that pawn wall this is definitely this is defin definitely a hyper modernist versus a classical opening mm. it's the big center versus peace activity yeah just just trying to cheap chip away at that at that big pawn center. And, and then the move is d6, to which white goes e4, black goes c5, attacking the center, and not taking because that will, will that help white. And then bishop to d3, h6, preventing a pin, which could be nasty. Just knight e2, knight c6, and f4, and this is pretty natural play for white. The white is just going to castle, enjoy an f5 push maybe in the future, and maybe start some sort of attack around the king, which we'll see later in the uh, example game. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, I just want to say hi to everybody coming into the stream right now. Uh, I, I see your challenges, and um, after after we, we go through this, this is uh, Dormant, Dormant Pastorinos here. Uh, when we're in a voice call, and he's and we're gonna go through a little bit of some Nimzo Indian ideas. Um, so after after we get through this, I'm definitely down to uh, to play some games. But yeah, okay. Sorry, dormant. Back. back oh, no you. worries. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so a move not to play in this position after s3. 
is d5, and you can probably tell why. Because this would... Can you actually tell why? So, as far as, far as I understand it, the, the c-pawn is... Or the, the double c-pawn, the front one, is a pawn that comes under attack, because it's a, it's a very weak pawn, uh, since it can't be defended by another pawn. So by offering this, you allow a trading off of a weakness um, for one of your central pawns. And yes, which is with the knight, exactly. That's bad. <laughs> yeah, that's bad. That just was a big center. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, also blocks your light square bishop. Yeah. So a lot of, a lot of unfun things can happen there. And we have here our first game, which features d5, which goes c takes d, e takes d, just e3. And play is pretty normal for white. I mean, there's a e5 push, there's bishop d3, there's a knight going to e2. And knight c3, castles, b6, rook to b1, queen c7, knight g3, which, actually, which is supporting e4. Then a5, trying to exchange the light square bishops, because look at white's light square bishop, it's a pretty active piece. Yeah. And uh, the pawns are all almost all on dark square, so it makes sense makes sense to exchange the bishops, because it's a good bishop versus a bad bishop. Hmm. Then we have rook b2, which is a move I actually don't quite understand. But uh, I yeah. mean, if a master plays it, it must be good. <laughs> right, right. And it's like I run into that all the time. Um, I, I, I see a move like this, and it's like I don't know what this is doing, but it's probably just beyond my understanding. Yeah. <laughs> so if you want to go through the moves yourself, uh, you're most welcome. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. We'll go ahead and and click through this this game. Okay, so the rook comes up. Out, oh, okay, trying to trade off the bishop. Yeah, yep. bishop. as as you mentioned, and takes takes. Takes. Now, I guess the the downside to this is the this rook isn't really. It's pretty passive on this square. Yeah, I guess it's, it's defending here for now, but it doesn't really have any possibilities of moving out. Yeah, um, indeed. Okay. So I'm breaking the center. Takes, 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 takes. Okay, hanging pawns. Mm. This, ju just these two pawns here. There's a lot of like ideas behind what to do and what not to do with a pawn structure like this. And keep in mind, the D pawn is a passed pawn, unopposed. Mm. That that is that is a good a good point to to make there. Always nice to have a pass pawn in the end game. Okay, so the rook comes back, but it's not doing anything here. And then developing a bishop with tempo. That makes sense. Okay, queen jumps over. Push the pawns. Okay, this is a move that I really like. Yeah, uh, just centralizing the queen, hitting uh, b6. And yeah, it it's a pretty pleasant move to to the eye actually. Yeah, and you can't you can't attack the queen um, with rooks, of course, because of the the pawns blocking it. And with the absence of a bishop, only the queen can control like a certain color square diagonals, and it's on the the light squares right now. So the combination of the bishop and the uh, and the queen here is pretty strong. Indeed. Okay. So a knight comes in, kicks kicks the queen off from, from a good square. Now rotating over to the F file. Let's see. Knight goes back okay. to the corner. I feel like this this knight has just been kind of jumping around without doing anything really great. Yeah, that knight has he has been doing things with purpose on the short run, but not on the long term. Yeah. Yeah, where let's see, where where does this knight want to live? Where's a good hole? I mean, I guess C C five could be a hole to attack. You, I guess you really want to put a knight on um 
e5 to blockade these pawns from advancing too much. Yep. But yeah. And maybe even even on c5 he would put pressure on e4 along with the other knight, and that wouldn't be a bad plan either. Yeah, and since since the pawn is on a light square and white has a dark square bishop, there's a you, you can't you can't use two pieces to defend it. I guess yeah. that's the whole point. So yeah, so the knight hops around a little bit, going for a rook lift. Man, that knight makes a lot of moves. And then oh wow, an exchange sacrifice yeah. and a vicious attack coming up. Yeah, and look, yeah, White's got three pieces over on the king side, and, and black the, only has and, one. <laughs> and there's like three pieces on the queen yeah, on the queen side doing absolutely nothing. This little box of like, doom. <laughs> and look at black's dark squares. I mean. Mm. White has a dark square bishop, and he can exploit those dark square weaknesses on the king side. Yeah, like here I'm looking at bishop to h6, just cutting the king, and then watch and out then for Queen this G check. Yeah, yeah, then that looks like a deadly idea. <laughs> Let's see. Then he brings the knight in instead. Interesting. Oh, threatening a fork. Yeah, the uh, good old fork here. Okay. And also bringing the piece closer to the king. True, yeah. I guess the, the knight is the short range piece of the two. Like the bishop can get there in one move. But the knight the knight needs a, a little bit of time to get and going. And coming there with tempo sure surely helps. Mm. That's a good point. Yeah. I I've I've um heard that in other games before, but yeah, making that connection here is good. It's good. So check. Cutting the escape square from the king. Yeah, and this pawn is becoming more and more dangerous. Check, check, checkmate. And there's, there's <laughs> well, a no. It's, I guess it's not, not mate, checkmate, but uh, but uh, yeah. It's... Basically, I have this all figured out. But uh, do you want me to give it the answer right away, or do you want to try to find the mate? Uh, we can let's let's put it up to chat. Let's see what what does what does chat think about about the move from here? What what does what does uh, white play to finish it off? I'm also gonna think about it too and see if I can come up with it. I mean, actually, it's knight. You you have knight g seven check. Okay. Okay. And and then depending on where the black king goes, there's checkmating possibilities on both on both squares you just have to find them okay so let's i guess we'll, we'll start with this one queen of seven is a move i guess with with this you have you have this immediately and then here hmm And then, yeah, what's in? I'm I'm so bad at attacking. There's uh, okay, there, there's got to be this. This, this has got to be yeah. something, right? Yeah. And then I mean, if here we can just we can take the rook. Actually, you have checkmate in one. There's checkmate in one. Oh, okay. <laughs> there you go. You found it. <laughs> oh man. You you would think at like uh, this point, right, that I would be I would be able to like find a checkmate in one, but you know. <laughs> if, it, if it were a classical game, you'd surely find it. Eventually, eventually. I think no, I've talked no, about no this. Often. <laughs> I, I've talked Although about this. no offense, but you would need some time. Yeah, yeah. I I think I, I've talked about this before with like um, it takes me a long time to filter through a lot of bad ideas before I come across anything that's good. <laughs> I think that's why I'm so bad at Blitz, is because I have so many bad ideas. And then here's the same pattern. Yeah, here. The goes up. Or, checkmate. Or this way, yeah. And cool. And checkmate again. Cool. <laughs> yeah. That's, See, that's once a, you find the idea... Game. The the exchange sacrifice to to open up the king's side was was pretty cool. 
Yeah, that's what usually happens in the in this line of the Nimzo Indian. If black doesn't play properly, white just gets a massive attack in every in almost every position. If black doesn't play what we will study tomorrow. Mm. All right. So back to the main line and b6 instead of castling and going d5. We actually have to go pretty quickly. We're running out of time. <laughs> well, uh, we we can we can keep going with this. Yeah, we got. There's only one more so, game to analyze, and then some mainline stuff. Yeah, it's just the main game now. So we have f3 again, which is the main idea. Black always plays f3, and then bishop d7, the move that uh, makes white struggle. Mm. Okay, and tomorrow we'll study bishop to a6, which actually puts pressure on the c4 pawn, and the game will revolve around that. But uh, bishop e7, as you'll see, does absolutely... Well, I think it does nothing, but uh, uh, I'm no master. <laughs> yeah, as, as, as far as I can tell, yeah, the, the threats are pretty empty. So we have e4... And look at that bishop. It's just looking at a look at this pawn chain. <laughs> when yeah. is this bishop going to come alive? <laughs> it's it's a sad piece for sure. But I guess it's so, just it's, yeah. With the the three the triple pawn, it's uh, it's hard it's hard to break that because if it was you know if obviously if f three wasn't played, but yeah, if there's two pawns, there's always a potential of trying to break the structure. Or I guess that's what would be the best. But three pawns is hard to accomplish so uh the move here is d6 but uh in d5 in this position is actually a mistake mm. because of the same reason as before we'll go c takes e takes e5 knight here and then bishop d3 and just look at how natural white's play is I mean, black can throw in this check and just block. F4, castles, knight F3, C5, castles, uh, because uh, the king was in the center and it, the pawn on E5 was pinned. And it's very important for that pawn to be unpinned so black can't play knight F6. Mm. Because if now, if black imagined, say, play knight C6, what would you play? After knight c6 here. Okay, let's see. My my first thought is to just go straight for the for the attack here, with ideas of trying to create a weakness around the king. Um, well, there there's a more immediate threat. Hmm. Well, let's look about it. There's a bishop pointing on this diagonal, a knight ready to go to g5, upon covering this square, which is an important escape route, a queen ready to hop in into here. To oh, you're trying five. to go for the, the, Greek, the Greek gift sacrifice? Exactly, it works <laughs> perfectly here. <laughs> I've actually never done a Greek gift in the game. I'm always so scared to sack pieces. Well, actually, there's a pretty good uh, recipe for the Greek gift, which is what you see right now. Okay. A pawn on e5, a knight ready to hop into d5 without being ex exchanged. No knight on f6, which it's pretty important. Mm. The queen has to have access to h5. And that's pretty much it. If you have these conditions, we, you can play the Greek gift. Okay. So then, and I, I think um, you're almost, you're supposed to walk forward with your king, right? Is like one of the the ways to attempt oh, to to, to avoid h five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To to avoid queen to h five. <laughs> <Right. laughs> um, yeah, that's uh, yeah, of course. Uh, <laughs> But I guess here, there's, yeah, there's five this is check. Just crushing. Yeah, there's this check, and then you're done. 
there's only one square and you have a a double check, I guess. Could yeah. be nasty. You go here, you can go here. Yeah, there's yeah, that, there's no way this that, isn't winning. Yeah. Okay. This ain't going to end three for black. So continue on to the game. We have uh, d6 and the uh, bishop to d3 and knight bd7. And again, just look at how how natural play is for white. Just develop pieces. And black is stuck in a very passive position. Like he hasn't committed to anything yet, and it's move. Well, it's only move nine, but. There's no tension in the center. Black has a massive center. He has the bishop pair. He's got pretty natural development. And black is surely going to struggle a little bit here. It's definitely hard to come up with a plan that went for black. Opposed, yeah. And like you were saying, the play is natural for white. There's a lot of... that. I guess that's the benefit of having space, though. Yeah, that, that is a benefit of having space. <laughs> it's easier to play. Yeah. So, well, some cases. So we have okay. castles, castles, c5, knight g3, rook to c8, bishop b2, queen c7, f4, rook f8, e5, and as you can probably guess, there's an, an attack going coming for the black king again. Uh, yeah, same same situation of the. Uh, I guess the the Greek gift isn't the exact way well, to go here, but it's definitely close to working. <laughs> Actually, yeah, f five here feels right. What do you yeah, think? F five here. Well, it does sound juicy, actually. But uh, if f5, what if black goes queen to c6? Can't exactly block that easily. And you'd have to play queen to e2 or rook to f2 to prevent that. Yeah. But other than that, it, it's just a threat, actually. Yeah, I think, I think queen e2 just kind which of... Is, which is or actually, actually... probably... Actually, you could play. Um, you can play bishop e4 here. Oh, bishop e4 actually. Yeah. And then d5. And then. Well, that that takes, closes up things. Takes takes once, and then, I guess, move the bishop back. Just go back to d3 and go. What are you gonna do with that diagonal now? Yeah, and f6 is coming. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is still doesn't look pretty for black. No, no. No, it doesn't look pretty. Only problem pieces is bishop, but even then, black uh, white has enough attacking potential because yeah, there's no pieces near the black king. And uh, the the bishop could even come back to c one in the right moment to apply pressure to the king side. Also, the dark squared bishop. Which is what happens in the game, actually. Hmm. So we have uh, e5, knight e8, queen to e2, probably preparing against queen c6, now that I think about it. Or then knight to f8. And knight on f8, there is no mate, <laughs> as the grandmaster once said. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a fun saying. If it rhymes, it has to be true, right? Yeah, I think it's John <laughs> Bartholomew that says that. Okay. John's great. So we have f5. d takes on e5. d, take, e, d takes on e5. Rook d7. Now f6. g takes on f6. e takes on f6. Queen d8. Bishop e4 trying to exchange that bishop. Rook c c7. Bishop c1, trying to expose those light squ those dark squares around the black king. Knight g6, adding a protective piece against the king. Bishop to g5. 
bishop takes e4, knight takes e4, rook to d3, h4, just going all in. Yeah. Didn't quite work for me yesterday, actually. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's fun to throw the, the h pawn. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll be getting into games here pretty soon, guys. Don't worry. We just got to finish. Yeah. We're going to finish this one one game analysis, and then yeah. I'll be taking it, challenges. Less than 10 moves. Yeah. <laughs> so we have rook to d3, e5, h5, knight f4, tempo on a queen, bishop takes f4, e takes on f4, queen g4 check, and this looks pretty nasty from here. There we go. There's a true Alakine's gun. <laughs> <laughs> That's a true Alakine's gun. Doesn't do much for Black. No, it doesn't do but, anything uh, here, but he the... did it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but it's there. <laughs> now, Rook to F5 threatening a, a nasty check. Yeah, that's a, a game ending yeah. check there. Yeah, and this is, yeah, the Rook this G5 is... check is game ending. Unstoppable. Because if rook to g5, the king has to step to, uh, what's this square, h8? And then the queen just comes here and delivers checkmate if the king wasn't, if the king is in the corner. Which, that, that's a cool and, checkmate, where the, the queen can checkmate the king by itself. Yeah, and if the knight ever moves, there's queen uh, g7 checkmate. So the knight is kind of needed, and all, at the same time... Uh, it's both um, the savior and the demise of the of yeah. The black it's both things. <laughs> okay, so that's the game. You have the names of the players below, and the event and all that. Awesome. Well, thank thanks for doing that, uh, Dorian Pasarino. Oh no worries.